Greetings, everyone. Nathan Nerdark here from Nerdarchy. Four nerds by nerds, hanging out with some nerds. Nerdark is Ted. Nerdark is Dave. And today we're talking about broken D and D rules. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Now, now for some tales from our games and how we broke the rules. So, in you know, in my recent Gen Con excursion. Uh, we played we played a pickup game of Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons with uh, Cody from Taking Twenty, Juice uh, GM Juice, uh, Doug from the the website for Nerdarchy, and my son, and we had like this we had something like come up right, so Juice was playing a barbarian and his his, his I think his ideal was I always have a backup plan, but. His flaw was I never stick to the plan. <laughs> so like they so they come up with this elaborate plan to disguise the, my son the dragonborn as a bugbear and send him into the into the the hideout first. So they go through this whole process, they make the checks. He looks kind of like a bugbear. And then the barbarian just charges through just, the, just uh, the <laughs> cave. So then he just like Leroy Jenkins. It. He totally Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> it. Leroy Jenkins. And he gets. <laughs> I didn't hear the story yet. I'm sorry. And he gets ambushed by a bugbear guardian, and gets dropped. So the bard next, who's played by Doug, goes up, looks, and sees what's going on. Sees you know this bar. Sees this barbarian dwarf down and unconscious. Sees. You know, this bugbear standing over him, wheel, deal, dual wielding morning stars. So he decides to do a prat fall, make it look like he falls on a sword. Because it's like, because there was like a ledge where the barbar where the bar, uh, bugbear was hiding, and and the tunnel kind of sloped down. So he's like, I'm going to do a prat fall and make it seem like I fall on my sword and pound myself and land next to the dwarf. So he makes some checks and like he does that, and as he lands next to the dwarf, he whispers uh, the heroism spell into his ear. <laughs> And now, the the bugbear is completely confused. Has no idea what's going on. You know, the rest of the party is kind of, kind of looking on, trying to decide what to do. And the way that spell works is you get three temporary hit points every round. He's unconscious though. We don't actually know what the rule is at the table. We're all like YouTubers, right? But we don't know. We're like so, and I'm like, I'm not gonna look it up. I don't care. But for two reasons. One, I thought it would just. It would be it's faster and two, I just thought it would be funny for the dwarf barbarian to get up, you know, Undertaker style, you know, after being KO'd at the beginning of the round. He does, he rages again, he attacks, he gets attacked, he gets knocked out again. <laughs> Cause he only had three hit points. So next round, same thing, three hit points comes up. So this goes on for like three or four rounds. <laughs> And later on, we like sage. We sent a thing into sage advice, and they actually answered it right away. Um, and it's like we totally did the rules wrong, but it would have been so so much less fun had we done them right. Like we had so much fun at the table, and I don't know if that comes through even like retelling the story. But during the actual session, during the gameplay, you know, just uh, you know, five dudes playing D and D, it was a blast. And I feel like had we played it right, it would have been less fun. It's, so it was more heroic that way, and that's the spell's name. Absolutely, so. well, absolutely. Yeah. I, I would have thought that the spell would have been called, you know, Chumbawamba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been appropriate. <laughs> so, what about you guys? You ever break the rules just to make the game more fun? Well, you know, th those of us and those of you who you know played the earlier editions, you know, there were specific rules for crafting magic items. And in my game, you know, I had a I had a wizard, Ace and Shard Gale, who the player is still you know, partly in that mindset of, well, as a as a wizard, I should be able to make magic items. So he's like, I want to create this this ring of water walking, and you know, I'm like, okay, well, there's no rules. Let me try and figure things out. So I came up with, well, maybe maybe have some spend some money. Have, have him make some checks, came up with DCs, and he didn't make it. So, so poof, no So, item. part of, you know, part of me and, you know, people at the table really expected it to be like, okay, well, that's just a, a wasted resource, both time and money, but rather than making nothing, I'm like, well, what if it, what would it wind up being? Create water three times a day or something? Yeah, ring of create water. 
Three so, times a day. It still is a ring. It still is a magic item. It involved water. It involved water. Yeah. But it was definitely minor in power can, in relation to what was originally the the intent. Rather than completely screw the player over, I said, well, you can have this instead. And I think it was appreciative. It's not quite as funny a story. It's not a, you know, heroic feat that wound up happening. But I think a on-the-fly decision wound up, you know, you know, not disappointing the player. Also, if I rec- recall correctly, like, he didn't make the DCs you set, but he didn't fail by that much either. So, so it, to me, it just seems like you just tiered the success levels more so than, okay, this is going to be a pass-fail. Mm-hmm. Which I do that with stuff all the time. And I think it, it does make the game a lot more interesting. You know, ha- yeah, having that, that tiered success rate is something that I, I think it definitely adds a whole other layer to the game. Where it's like, oh, well, do you know anything about this dragon lord? Okay, well, if he's really rare, then, well, that, might, that check might be a 20. But that, that gives you what, you what you need to know. If you get an 18 or you get a 15, you still might know something. It's probably not going to give you all the information or any specifics in what, what you're looking for. But it might give you something, and that could be a clue to then go investigate or find more. Yeah, maybe you could research and find the like the book that you wouldn't have found otherwise. Right. Yeah, yeah failures in the game are so much more fun when they lead to more adventure than it's just a, a brick wall. Yes. So with my instance, I was playing a online game for fans, uh, Spiders from Mars, and um, basically there were all these space spiders involved. And I had said, hey guys, you know, your 10th level, bring characters that can kill stuff. Because, it's, <laughs> because as far as I knew, it was going to be like a crazy epic levels of fight based on the CR levels in the game and how everything was stacked together. Well, um, something came up immediately was there was a high-level assassin and a high-level barbarian. And um, that was a, that was kind of like, well, I've got face spiders, and they're going to teleport in or, or phase in from the ethereal plane, and they're not going to surprise over half the party, or like half the party's not going to get surprised. So it's like, well, rather than just pretty much murder late the only <laughs> player that was going to be surprised all the time uh, because they didn't have a high deck so they usually always had lower initiative as well as they didn't have any skills that were going to alleviate the problem with being surprised by things jumping out of the ethereal plane so it's like well that's not going to be fun for that player if i just gang up on them every single time so instead i just kind of made it so that the barbarian's level of awareness uh you know su- you know supernatural levels of awareness and the, the assassin's skilled level of awareness just said kind of, eh, you know, they phase in, but the barbarian and the assassin just kind of handle it. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they position themselves in such a way because they know something's going to happen like immediately right before it happens. Or they, you know, react supernaturally quick. So I just had it be that they kind of protected the party with their level of awareness. Rather than going by the rules and just pretty much killing the wizard every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Although it can be fun to just kill the wizard sometimes. Oh, I, I hit him hard several times, and he got crits against him. But, you know, I could have just piled up all the face spiders on him, and maybe that's what the face spiders would have did, or the things controlling the face spiders would have done. But at the same time, it would have just been like, okay, half the part, half the table's not having fun. So, right, so you kind of just said, okay, you, you basically extended the, the ability of two-thirds of the party to the other third and said, ah, you know what, they're going to move, they're going to cover, they're going to protect, they're going to protect the wizard, so we're just going to do normal initiative instead of, you know, instead of this one, you know, dog pile on him. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with changing the game when you think it's going to make it more fun for the players in the game. And, you know, you as the DM, you're one of those players. So if you think you have something that's going to change the game or change the rules so that everyone has more fun, it can't be wrong. Now, I will say that if this was on a one-shot and I was with these people for like a year-long campaign, I would totally be fine with like one (laughs) time this guy's abilities just don't line up with the threat and this person has a hard time with it. Okay, takes more damage, gets more attacks. People have got to be like, all right, we got to be more aware of this and protect our, our wizard or our cleric or whatever. But... 
because it was only a short three hour game, he was going to have a miserable time for the three hours. <laughs> and what, that's like way different than, oh, you know, a couple encounters are really hard for the wizard or really hard for the fighter because he doesn't have ranged attacks and well, they're all ranged attacks. Or, when you, you when know, that you, kind of thing. Sorry. When you have a ongoing game, you can make it times where this one character is targeted or it's harder for them because that's the way stories flow and evolve there's there's obstacles that characters have to overcome so in an on, in an ongoing game those things i think should be taken into account but i think i think you made the right choice for a one shot you know having one person have a miserable time because he doesn't have that ability yeah yeah so made the call for adjusting the rules rather than following the rules as they're written i must say though I've killed a fan, and it wasn't one shot. Fortunately, happened at the end, and also, and also, former former nerd Arcus Ryan also performed the TPK on a party as well. So, <laughs> hey, it happens. It happens. TPKs <laughs> happen. It's just all about. See, it's all about timing, right? It, you know, to have someone die at the very beginning is kind of lame and boring, you know. And then what do you do? And then the rest of the party has a hard time. But if you can time it just right and kill him at the end, if you can get to the final encounter and, and get that kill, then it's not as not as. It big could a be deal. epic. It could be heroic. It could, their death maybe could even have a little meaning. Yeah, I mean, I almost uh, you know had a had a character death in my last game. So, woo! Well, your when in your game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did I almost kill you? Well, I mean, I was I was down twice. <laughs> ah, that doesn't count. <laughs> You didn't even have two failed death saves. <laughs> but the question is, guys, what do you? how do you break the rules in your game to make them more fun? we got a place for that. It's called The Comments. While you're down there, like, share, and subscribe. You can check out the articles over at nerdarchy.com. You can tweet at us on Twitter, at Nerdarchy. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.